about one year ago, um, every morning and during the springtime, um, I went out in, and sat down in front of my next door neighbor's house um, because I had planted a bunch of iris. I actually used to live next door to where I live now. And when I was there, I planted all these iris. And um, so I would go over to my neighbor's house and, and draw their iris. Um, and this, I, and I did this, um, here we go, every day. And I got to know these plants really well and just found it so eventually just meditative and relaxing to go and play with my little iris friends. Something that really helps me be able to draw them is to be able to see the, the parts of the iris. And so what we're gonna do is just sort of start with, um, I've made a little diagram sketch here of the parts and the pieces of the iris. And an iris is built on a sort of triangle system. Everything is in threes. So there are three petals, three sepals, three pin, uh, 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 pistols and or three parts of the pistol and the three stamen that are popping. And if you look down at it, at it from the top, you can see this triangle structure really well. The big, broad, floppy things that stick out that most people think are the uh, petals of the iris are actually its sepals. So sepals are the, the parts of the flower that wrap around the outside of the whole inflorescence as it's growing. So when you look at it at a bud of a, an iris, what you're seeing are the sepals on the outside. And what's cool about them is that they are petaloid sepals. So they kind of sepals that sort of look petalish. They have wonderful nectar guides on them. So these are lines that sort of say to the flies that are, or the uh, bumblebees and things that are coming in, you know, this is the way to, you know, to find the nectar and the pollen. And so they direct them right into the throat of this thing. At catty corners to those, there are three long skinny petals. So the petals are these long skinny things and one of them is opposite each sepal. And so there are three of those. And then above each of the sepals, there is a petaloid pistil. So the pistil or the female reproductive, external female re reproductive part of the flower, instead of being a little stalk that comes up with a tuft on it, like we're used to seeing, it looks like another petal-like structure. So <clears throat> this, is, this is pretty cool. Um, tucked underneath that, um, tucked underneath the pistol is a little stamen. So each pistol has one stamen hiding underneath it. So if you were to be a bee, and if you can see my little arrow on the screen here, you're a little bee and you come along here, and you land on the big sepal here. The nectar guides are saying, come this way, come this way. And you're going to follow those, ooh, what's going to be down here, into this tube that's made by the sepal on the bottom and a roof of the pistol. And as you crawl down that tube, the first thing that you brush against on your back is this little flap that hangs down from the roof. And um, that is the, the, the style, the, um, the part of the plant, the, the, the female structure of the pistil that is actually picking up the pollen. So you brush against this little flap. So it's a flap that sticks down like this. So as you brush, as you climb in, it's pushing this open. And as you climb out, it's gonna be pushed back the other way, sealing itself so that you don't self-pollinate, <laughs> right? So you pass the little pistol flap, continue your way down, and now the stamen is rubbing against your back as you crawl down to get some nectar treats. The stamen is now rubbing against your back. You turn around, work your way out. 
you now um, have a back that is covered with pollen. And you go on to the next flower, you bring the pollen from the flower that you were just at to the stigma of the new one that you are, uh, uh, sorry, to the, 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 uh, the, the, the style of the, the new one that you are, 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 oh wait, hold on, look at this. The, the, now I see why I, my brain is kind of confusing me. Um, look on my chart here. Um, I have labeled my the stigma the style and the style of the stigma. Now the stigma is that little fleshy pad at the end. The style of the sock that holds it up. And on here, I put that backwards. That's okay. It's a nature journal note. But what's cool is I've actually put this in a bunch of books in other places. <laughs> I've never noticed this before. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, the, 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 the stigma is that little sticky pad. The style is the sock that holds it up. Um, and um, sometimes when you are um, marking things out in your nature journal, you make mistakes. This would be an example of one of those. And that's OK. Let's take a look at what, so these are more kind of diagrammatic irises. Here is my iris project. What I did is I would visit this, this same flower every day, or sometimes multiple times a day. So this was on the 12th. Here you see the sepals visible right here of this flower. And then it starts to open. So between this thing flips out and the rest of these other three are going to flip out. This was at 6 a.m. in the morning, right? And um, about two and a half hours later, all of them were opened and it was looking like this. And then by 7 p.m. that night, it was fully open like this. So within a day, it went from ba-doom, 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 right? And so what you're seeing here is all of these crazy parts. So this big part that sticks out on the bottom here, that's our sepal, right? This is our pistol that curls up like this as your pistol. And here's your petal. These, these skinny ones, these thin things that stick up, there's three of those, one, two, three. Those are the petals. And then what I did is I followed this through time, right? So this first flower lasted three days and then they all started to curl up. And as it was starting to curl up, look who's starting to come up here. See that little thing? There's this spike that is starting to come up here. And it starts to then grow really fast, right? Um, so here it is on the 19th, the next day on the 20th. Um, and then the 21st, it's all the way open. It's just so much fun to see these things just um, grow and grow and grow and grow. So then I'm starting to follow this flower, right? It starts to curl up and wilt. That first one is all withered right there. And then they're very, very withery. And then they get even more withery and spiders start to form on them. And then, those seed parts start to turn brown. And then my neighbor weed whacked them. So <laughs> what would have happened next? Um, I can't tell you. Um, but that was, that was the end of, of, the, of the, 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 the saga there, at least from what I was able to record. But so much fun. So they're, they're really cool flowers. And, but when we look at them, they're initially they're initially kind of scary looking because there's they're really kind of wobbly and crinkly. So um, the way we're going to be drawing these petals is the same way which we drew our curled leaves. So if my hand is the leaf and it's curled, if you remember when we were drawing the curled leaf, we looked at the shape of the top surface of the leaf and we drew that. And then we drew the shape of the bottom surface of the leaf and put it adjacent to that. So that shape plus that shape made the shape of that hand. The same thing is going to be happening with these petals. So every place and sepals and every place that I'm seeing it curl and turn, my brain is going to block that out as a separate shape like this. 
Whoops, not like that. Nope, not like that. Like this. There we go. So look at this. This sepal here, I'm not, my brain isn't visualizing it as this thing that's coming up and twisting and curling. When I'm going to draw it, I flatten it with my brain and my eyes. So what I do is I close one eye as I look at it. I close one eye and that turns this three-dimensional thing in front of me into a flattened two-dimensional shape. And just as I imagine if I've taken a photograph of it and now got out a little exacto knife and cut out each of these little shapes, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at this as one shape and I'm going to put it next to this shape. And I'm going to put that shape next to this shape and that shape next to this shape. So this one was a combination of four little shapes. This one here is a combination of two. So I'm actually not envisioning how this should look if something is coming up and I'm seeing, seeing both sides and curling. I'm looking at it and just drawing a shape next to a shape. On your piece of paper, do that now with this pedal here. What I'd like you to do is just to draw this shape, not thinking of it as a pedal, but think of it as, as a little goofy shape. Draw that into your notes right now. I'm going to do the same. This is a curvy side. And then what you're going to do is take that second shape and just draw it adjacent to that first one and make the top corner of it, the top edge right here, you know, get this to a sharp little point and then round that point around here to start that other side. The other thing that's going on with this is see this little line that comes up on this side? That is aiming towards the bottom of this little curve here. See where this curve comes in? This edge here behind the scenes is gonna come up here. So if I were a line on the surface of this, it would be coming up here and then coming out here. So this line wants to line up there. So again, I'm putting a shape next to a shape and that's how I'm gonna be handling the curly petals on these drawings. But I also want to get that structure so how do I go about doing that? So I go about doing that with a light non-photo blue pencil drawing. All right. Oh, so here it is, putting those shapes together, and we get our shapes. So let's 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 build this iris. Right. Taking a look at it again, I have sepal, sepal, sepal. I have um, my pistol here sticking up, that's that petaloid pistol. You can see the other petaloid pistol above that sepal. Here's the other petaloid sepal above this, petaloid pistol above this sepal. And I have one, two, three, one, two, three right here. These three are my petals that are sticking up long and skinny. And take a look at these. This one is curling over, this one's curling under itself. This one I see a top and a bottom of it. This one I see the underside here, the top side here, the underside here. Oh no, what will we do? Don't worry, we're gonna handle this. We're gonna just block it out step by step, shape by shape. And we've got a bunch of strategies that are gonna help us be able to do this. But first we want to kind of block in this basic shape. So let's take a look at a little bit of the geometry of, of this thing. So one way I think about the geometry of it is what is the sort of the axis down through the center of it? So it's generally you know, here. And then I'm going to draw just a little light loose circle around this stuff here that's all sticking up and about this stuff on, on the side. Let me now just jump over and so, so here's, this is sort of one way of thinking about the, the framing this, this in. I can also think about this in terms of big ellipses. If I draw a, a line that connects the tips of each of these sepals, they make an ellipse here on the side going further away from me than coming around to the side that's closer to me. 
Then here's another ellipse around the tops of these little sepals. Here is another ellipse. Now we're looking up at the underside of this ellipse because we're rather close to this drawing, close to this flower. Um, so we're seeing these ellipses from different angles. Um, this one is going around the tops of these petals out here. So that's another way to think of some of the geometry of this flower. I then am going to transfer these thoughts and ideas to a light, loose sketch on the paper. And these four little drawings here, they kind of look like space invaders. These were just four possible examples of how I might have gone about doing that. Some are more angular, some are using more circles. This is here to say that there is not one way that you're supposed to be using these shapes. Right, that you're supposed to be kind of blocking this in. And one person's first, oh, I'm going to just lightly, loosely block these things in will be different than another person's. So let me just, uh, just kind of hit this again. Right here, you're seeing kind of an oval for the top part and then an oval for the bottom part. If I was looking at these, again, that would be an oval for the top part and oval for the bottom part. Let's look at this one over here. There's a little cone sticking up. There's then a row sticking on off that, and then there's this sort of angled wings going down, like what's happening with that? So what I'd be thinking about there is I would be thinking about this cone sticking up. I would then be saying, okay, then there's another level that has these things in it. And then here's this kind of angled things coming up and down, going out to a point here. You see that either one of those could be kind of legitimate ways of initially blocking this thing in with some light, loose gesture sketch lines on your piece of paper. There isn't one way to do it. But what you want to start to do is to loosely start to block in the shape of what you're seeing. So I'm going to use this one. And I've got sort of a central axis through my flower. And I'm just putting an oval in here for the top. I, what I want to do here is just make sure I don't make this section too big. And I don't make this section out here too small. So I'm just kind of going in. I've got an upper part that's roughly this big, and I've got a lower part that's this big. That would be a totally legit way to start this flower. Not the only way, but one possible way to start kind of blocking this in. I'm also noticing that there are kind of some angles here. These parts here line up, those parts here line up. That's why I've kind of drawn in these lines here. Whatever lines you feel are going to help you roughly block this bad boy in, those, that's, that's what you want to do. Now, I'm going to add, I'm going to start to make this light pencil sketch a little bit more nuanced. Because if I said, now, now draw the rest of the flower on top of this, you'd be like, yeah, I don't know where to start. I'm going to start with this big sepal in the middle that, oh, sorry, I'm going to just put in some of those ovals, right? So here is that little oval saying I've got top parts kind of around here. I've got middle parts, the tops of those sepals that will be roughly in here. And here is that little oval for the bottom part of that. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm looking at the flower and saying I've roughly got a shape that's flat across the top, flat across the top, comes out to a corner on the right, about halfway down, then down to a more flattened base, up to a higher corner here, and back here. You notice I'm not getting all these little nooks and crannies. I was recently painting with Amelia. <laughs> this is fun. Um, we were uh, painting part of a planter box. And she came up and she said, I want to help get all the, the crooks and nannies. So um, you want to get these crooks and you know, I'm not worried about these crooks and nannies at this point here. Um, I'm just blocking in that roughly this petal kind of has a shape like that. You see the, the similarity between these? It doesn't have to be exact. I'm just loosely blocking this in. And now, check this out. This is going to be cool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the shape of the air next to my petal here. And I'm going to 
focusing on the shape of this negative space here. That's what I've kind of done the cross hatched in red here. I want to get this shape here. I want to get this next sepal out the right distance away. So I'm looking at this negative shape. It's really important that when you're looking at a real flower, you're doing this with one eye closed. Otherwise, each eye will see a totally, totally different negative shape. So I draw in that negative shape, and that gives me this bottom edge of it. And then the top edge is going to be something roughly in like that. But I place this sepal here by getting that negative shape. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Notice that the negative shape on the other side is much bigger and wider. If you just drew in the shape of the sepal without looking at the negative shape, your brain would probably make those two shapes on either side the same size. That's why we look at these negative shapes. They're different sizes. I've got a big one and I've got a small one. So I'm going to block in that I've got pedally stuff coming down here. And then I'm going to be doing the same thing for the stuff above. So I'm roughly blocking in. About in this area here, I've got this pedaloid um, pistol coming up. And it's roughly in this area here. Roughly in this area here, you know, I'm just drawing in a little rectangle over here on the side. I'm saying I've got a, um, I have a, uh, a pedaloid pistol in this area, and it's going to be roughly that big. For getting the petals at the top, what I did is the same thing that I did with those sepals on the bottom. I put in the middle one first. So I put in this middle one, saying roughly there's a shape that it's coming up about this big. And then I looked at the shape of the negative shape on one side and the negative shape on the other side. It's big on one side, it's small on the other. If I just was drawing in those petals, I would end up drawing in those petals the same distance apart, but I'm intentionally looking at those negative shapes. So as I'm looking at that, it draws this side of that other petal, and then I can flesh that out. So center petal, negative shapes on either side of that, and then the outer edge of those petals on the top. And this gives me a fairly good blocked in structure of that iris. And now I'm going to start drawing my flower parts on top of this. And you're thinking like, okay, now, ah, there's now we're, this is getting this is getting scary, right? But again, what I'm doing is I'm not looking at this. Let's take a look at this uh, one on the left hand side. I'm not looking at it as a twisting, curling shape. I am looking at it as this little shape here, this little shape here that is next to another flat shape. See, I'm doing that trick where I close one eye and I'm just looking at a shape next to a shape next to a shape. And I believe the iris. There's no way my brain would be able to make up a petal doing something crazy like this. So what I do is I believe the iris and say like, okay, you wanna have a shape like that? All right, I'm gonna now just put another shape next to it. So this one on the other side, it is this shape next to this shape. And I often like to kind of look for these kind of corners in it. I, if you look, this is maybe I kind of overdid it on making this really angular. But I like to kind of look for the corners in these things. Every place this pedal turn, turn, changes direction, that's a decision that I'm making. right? I want to show those corners are really going to start to carve this this flower. And it has this surface that's pointing towards me, so I'll put that in. You notice that I'm also starting with the surfaces that are on the side of this flower that are the closest to you. The closest sepal, the closest pistil, and the closest petals. This is intentional. And we'll do, I'm going to have a whole section of this a little bit later where we'll dwell on this a little bit more. This is actually a really big deal. 
This is an important trick. And the reason is that as I'm drawing in the other parts of this flower, they are going to be tucking behind these first parts. So when I go in to draw these other parts, I stop those drawings at places where I've already drawn the first part of my flower. So for these parts in the background, we also are drawing in where I'm, I'm looking at the shape of the petal and I'm also really looking at the negative shape. To get the shapes on the front edge here, look at the negative shape, the shape of the black here behind this iris. <clears throat> And then I'm going to put in a little bit of detail on the surfaces that are the closest to me. If this, by the way, is going too fast, don't worry. We're going to do a real um, kind of live draw along in a little bit. But I want people to sort of see the thoughts and see the process and sort of get the major landmarks in this. I'm blocking it in. I am um, using negative shapes. I'm drawing front to back, and I'm only really putting detail on those surfaces, those structures that are the closest to me. If I put them on all of these, if I put the same amount of detail on this sepal back here as this sepal, they would feel like they're in the same plane. So I only really want my popped in detail to be on that one that's closest to me. So this done with graphite could be something like this. Um, this is done with pen and ink and a marker. So this was, I inked in these lines and put in my marker. Notice on the inked lines here that this one in the back, there are no nectar guides or details, no nectar guides and details. Heavier lines on the ones that are in front of us. Lighter lines on those parts on the back. So this little, um, this little petal sticking up in the back it's getting lighter lines than these ones that are in the front. Here's the same thing done with some watercolor. So you can, you can finish these out in a bunch of different ways, but all those are done on that same structure. So let's just take a look at drawing front to back, then we'll put up a picture of, a, of, of an iris and look at how we can um, and, and just do a, a kind of draw along together. I'm going to take a look at this idea of drawing front to back with this iris drawing. Some things are closer to you, some things that are, are further away. As I look at it, I notice that the structures in front have more detail. The pistol that's there in the back and, and the sepal that's there in the back, no detail. The petal that is in the front gets lots of detail. The petal that's in the back, it didn't get detail. It's not because I don't love it. It's that I don't want my drawing to look flat. So this, once I kind of blocked in my basic shape, you notice that this one is blocked in. The basic shape is kind of, I'm using some different lines. There's a lot of different ways that you can, can block these in. So again, there's not one right way to do it. But I would start drawing um, this. Oh, oh, no, not you. I would start drawing this thing by drawing this surface that is the closest to me. And then I tuck in the part that I'm going to finish that by drawing the part that's behind it. So I'm drawing front to back here. I first drew this front surface and this back surface. There and again, there are some of there as you see the negative shape that's helping me get in that form there. Now, when I put in my pistol coming over the top of this, it's a combination of a shape next to a shape, next to a shape, next to a shape, next to a shape. I've just got one eye closed and I am building this by just, if I had to make up a iris petal out of my head, I'd have a real hard time. But I can close one eye and look at my iris in front of me and just kind of go, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna believe the shape next to the shape, next to the shape, next to the shape. Moving further back, this was my first structure, and then this is further back in space, and this is further back in space. So I'm now working my way back in three-dimensional space as I work across this flower. And then 
I would be putting in the structures that are behind those. And then I'd be putting in the structures that are behind those. And you see how the part I've already drawn, it's blocking a lot of this pistol and uh, sepal that are in the background. And that's why I like to draw front to back. Once I've got my framework blocked in, I'm going to draw front to back. And that helps me kind of handle these structures that are sticking back there. If I'm putting in more deliberate line work, I'm popping the lines on the structures that I want to come closer to me. So notice this here gets big lines. It gets big lines and big detail. More detail, less detail, even less detail. More detail, less detail, even less detail. So as the sepals go back, as the petals go back, as all these structures go back, the line work and the detail, it's getting less and less and less. And that's going to help your reader your, or your viewer not get confused on your structure. They'll be able to help. They, these will be clues that will help them kind of keep some sense of depth in this picture. And there's a watercolor of the same drawing. So now let's do a real-time ride-along with this iris. I'm going to start by trying to block in this basic shape. And so to do that, roughly, I've got a central axis through my flower here. And there is a wider bottom part, and there is a skinnier upper part. And the sides make angles. I have a petal in the center that has some angles that come down like this. And then look at this nice negative shape here. All right, so I'm now thinking negative shape. So I'm drawing the inside of this negative shape. So I don't have to get in here and actually draw something in there, but I want to visualize this shape. I think I made that a little bit too big. I am going to bring that in. Okay. And what about the negative shape on the other side? Oh, negative shape on the other side, it's gonna go up big and over. And then there's gonna be this little zone here of petals sticking out. And what about on the other side? Well, it's going to be, um, it's going to come up and it's going to be flat or, or on the top and coming in like that. So you see, there's no detail here. I'm just blocking in roughly these shapes. I want to move this like that. See there? Because I've got no commitment to any details here, it's really easy for me to move these kind of lines around and, and mess with it like that. Now, I have petaloid sepals, uh, sorry, petaloid pistol coming up in here. I have the same thing coming off here and the same thing coming off here. And in the middle, I have one big petal and a big negative space. What about on the other side? I have a skinny negative space. Skinny negative space. And it's going to come in here like that. So what this has done is given me just a, I, I've, I've, I've blocked in my little framework. I'm looking at my negative shapes. And now I can get in there. I'm going to take out my mark pen. So this is a zebra pen, first introduced to me by Mark Simmons. And I am going to start to draw on top of this. 
you'll notice as I do, I'm not going to be following this line exactly. This is just a basic shape. And so I'm going to come with a curve. It's going to come up. It's going to sweep down and come up to a little point. Then it will curve around a small point here and swoop out. And there's a little bit of a little bit of a whoop right at the end of it, coming down a little bit of a whoop right there. Hey, Melinda, I like the double screen. Yeah. It's Thank nice, you for isn't it? showing me this. <laughs> Game a changer. Right? This one's going to come down. And then what's 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 happening right here? Okay, this line, I'm, I don't have to think of this as, as a three-dimensional crazy petal thing. I'm just going to believe the flower. You're going to come out, you're going to come down, and then you are going to flip over. So I just draw the outer edge of that. And then with a lighter line, I'm going to come in here and draw the underside of that. Slightly lighter line. On the bottom, there's a bump. It's going to come over here to a little angle. And then this part, what does it do? It kind of curves in. And notice on the screen here, I'll use my um, my arrow here as a pointer. I'm seeing this edge, edge, edge here, and then something interesting is happening here. In this area right here, I am, you're losing that kind of edge. And so I'm going to draw this coming up here, and line gets lighter and peters out. Here I put in a little dot so I can end my lines by having a thick line becoming thinner and stopping, or you can have a thick line become thinner and then you dash it out. Either way will do, but that sort of helps people kind of visualize that as that was a surface that's a line that is then kind of ending in there. And then what is happening here, we're coming down whoop, underneath that. Then that whole thing is curling around outside of your view but I have the clues that help somebody see that that's what's going on. That's pretty cool. Now, I'm going to jump up here to this um, petaloid pistol that is, is coming up here. And it is going to be, it's going to come up. And then there is a surface that gets jaggy. And down to a little V in the middle. Another part of this that is fairly significant is down here. I'm seeing the top of the tube right there. So I'm going to just sort of suggest that we're seeing kind of the top of a tube in here. And now drawing front to back, what is the next structure that is the closest to me? It's these two petals, these two petals. And I'm going to be drawing this as Right, it's going to come out of here. And as a shape next to a shape next to a shape. So that means there's a bottom shape that is going to be doing something like that. See, there's that little, this little wedge that points up right here. That's what I'm getting. And then there is, um, let's see, a line that comes up, jaggies out. It's going to come up here. It's going to wobble in and out, wobble. Wibble, wobble, wobble, wobble. So I just drew a line with some wibble wobble in it. 
that line is going to, on the back side of it, it's going to be coming down here and feeding into that. So let me get some of these lines. So I'm going to start with this line right here. Woo. So maybe I have one too many wibble wobbles in there. I like the wibble wobbles. In here, I'm going to draw this line a little bit lighter because it's the underside of this. This is the edge that is coming towards you. That's the underside of that structure, a little bit lighter. And then as I'm going in here, with these little wibble wobbles, I have, let's see, some of this edge down like that. And I have part of another side of this. And my wibble wobbles at the top are not quite like what I'm seeing there on my screen, but I'll just have to make peace with that and deal with it. <clears throat> I'm gonna do the same thing on this one on the other side don't quite like the way that tip of my, oops, um, the tip of my wibble wobble came out. And I'll show you how I can fix that if when I get a little bit more done, I really don't like that. So here it's going to be a line that comes up. And it is going to, at the top, tuck in, come over and then come back down. So that side doesn't really have a lot of wibble wobble. There is part of, you know, we can see some other structures on it on that other side there. And So I've got some petals that are coming up. At this point, this tip is bothering me a little bit. So I'm going to, I'm using ink. So I'm going to just come over that. I've got a correction pen here. This is a Pentel correction pen. And I'm just going to go over some of these lines. And essentially it's a, it's like a big pen of whiteout. And I will come back and play with those again later. Um, what is happening here? I'm going to use a lighter line to come out for this um, pistol structure that is dangling down here. And I'm also going to use a, a similarly lighter line. for that pistol structure that's over there. For this edge, comes down to a point and You know, this is a little bit larger, longer than that, that structure on the, the screen there. I was trying to kind of get there's this bump to this little surface here. So I'm drawing that shape and I'm going to put it next to this shape here. What is that shape? Well, it's going to come in, it's going to come down, it's going to come out and back. And then in there. I'm seeing a little bit of the top surface of it here. And if this is dry, and it is, I can come back in and fix my the, the, the tip of this petal. All right, so what is it going to do? It wants to kind of swoop back here and then come back here. So it's just a simpler structure. 
That'll be better. All right, so it's gonna come back. That's simpler, that's better. I have this sepal here. And what are the shapes on that? Okay, there is, there's a shape that is gonna come up and out from here. And then there's a little bit of an edge that is curled towards me here. And then the rest of it is an underside of this thing. All right, so I'm gonna use the tip of this pen to draw a lighter line. I want this to be a lighter line. So I want it to be further away from us. And it's coming down to a pointed tip here. Does this kind of neat thing? There's a little. The final thing is this petal in the back, and I'm going to use a thin line. It's going to come up. It is going to come in here like this. It's going to then disappear behind here. It's going to have a little bit of a flip up. And then a big curve down. And now I'm at a place that I can add in some details. So what am I going to do? I want to think of these nectar guides. So if you've ever watched me draw the front of a bird, you've seen me kind of do this 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 thing where my bird, you know, it's it's in here and um, on the, the the center of its chest, I draw that line down the center of the chest so I can kind of get the the symmetry on either side of that center line of that bird's chest. I'm going to do the same thing here. You see these one two three here where the yellow is line through it and a line on either side. That's the central axis of this sepal. And um, it is kind of coming around here and lightly coming down like that. It has these other ones riding on either side of it. And then this line here, is curving out more. And this one is curving out even more here. And this one, I'm going to erase these lines so they don't confuse us. But look at this. So this line here coming down. And then we're curving around here. See how this one is curving this way, this one is curving this way. And then I've got these little curvers here. When I start to put in these lines, they do a wonderful thing of carving the curve of this sepal. So I'm going to come over that curve, come over it here. And then what's happening on the other side, we're coming down more straight. And then curve this one this way, curve this one this way. So you see how those, those lines help you visually see that, oh, this is this surface that is wrapping around down there. So I can kind of go up and into that. I'm 
these little ridges and lines on the iris can also help me get some texture into part of these um, the the these petals as well. Just a little bit like that, just sort of helps you sort of see that as a surface. What is going on on these ones here? Right here, I've got just a little bit of, look, we've got a throat here of, you see how you can now go down that throat and those little lines there help round that surface. As I go further back on this iris, the structures are going to get fewer and fewer little lines, nectar guides, and details. I also can come in, and if there's a few lines that I really want to punch, I'm going to strengthen this line here. Maybe strengthen this really help people sort of see this as like, here's the, here's the entrance to this throat. These structures, they're big, they're prominent, they are closer to you. And that is a start at helping us be able to capture these irises. Um, let me just grab a notebook off my shelf. So um, here are some of my here are some of my little friends, All right? So here is, here we are taking a look at an iris. You can see it fully open. You see the same things. Notice how those lines. Let me move my. Let me let's get better focus here. Let's get some focus on this. Thing. There we are. These lines help you understand that as a rounded form. Um, also notice that structures that are closer to you, I'm using heavier lines on those. So heavier lines here, here, and here. These parts here in the background, lighter lines. Following the same batch of iris through time, my first one is starting to wilt and I'm getting a new one that is coming down. And I'm gonna start following that new one It pops open at 8 p.m. And this is what it was doing by 4.30 that same day. Isn't that cool? I think if I had paid a little bit more attention to what these lines were doing right here, it would have helped you kind of roll over that. See how this one is kind of coming in a little bit at an odd angle? Let me just zoom down on that. Boop. Right? So if I had actually rounded that over here, you'd be able to roll over this curve a little bit more easily. Kind of like you, you get to do here. Right? That one is feeling like you're rolling over it a little bit more. And then that one wilts. So, I want to encourage you to find if there is an iris near you that is opening. What you can do is you can follow that through time. And so here I'm following this to there, to there, to there. All right. 
right? You can follow it through time and really get a sense for the, you know, the hero's journey within a single flower. Um, so much fun, so much fun. These are such cool structures. And it's a great opportunity for us to practice getting depth and structure in our drawings. If I'm drawing something that's complex like this, what am I doing here to intentionally, because this is, there's a lot going on right here. So what can I do? What can I do to make that curling twisting structure visually make more sense? And we've looked at a number of tricks and tools that you can do with your own iris and wildflowers. I hope that this was a useful workshop for you. I am going to um, and uh, there's a lot going on in an iris, but think of these iris studies as studies. Think of them as I'm, go I'm intentionally going into something that is pretty chaotic where there's a lot going on because I want to use it as a platform for playing with some illustration and drawing ideas. It's gonna force me to be really intentional about building the structure at the start. How can I put these little pieces together to make a structure that's gonna make sense? It's gonna force me to be really intentional about what can I do to, um, what, what can I do to show a curl or a twist, whether that's lines on that surface or the shape of the, a, a shape next to a shape. And the more you play with this, I think you're going to find that what starts off as feeling, oh no, if we approach it like, I'm just gonna do some studies, I don't, you do not need to make a pretty picture of this iris. Let me stress this again. You do not need to make a pretty iris picture. What you do want to do is by cranking through some iris studies is to learn some strategies and techniques for managing these kinds of shapes. And what you're going to find is that the fear is going to go away. And you're going to unpack a box of tools that you can use to show the structure of an iris or any other complex subject. And I hope you have some fun with that.